One of the funny things is that I actually am going to read from a paper, which I find is funny given the topic. So I'm going to attempt to uh, make this very academic paper out of something that I would normally, like I would normally not speak like this, so <laughs> about this particular topic. So that's kind of an interesting way of keeping myself within the bounds. But also I want to give you the disclaimer in case you haven't, if you can't glean from the title, that there will be some not safe for work images, um, which is funny because I am actually at work right now. And so I've never presented this in a work setting. I have presented some of this work in a conference, but we will see how it goes. Um, Yes, so just be prepared for that. All right. Okay, so over time, avant-garde fashion has employed an increasing amount of subversive and sexually explicit imagery in its designs and representation. From surrealist fashion designer Elsa Scaparelli's suggestive lobster dress in collaboration with Salvador Dali, uh, to Vivian Westwood's mid-1970s boutique sex, and Jean-Paul Gaultier's use of gay pornographic actors as models, connections between sex, dress, and the body are abundant in the history of fashion. In contemporaneity, avant-garde fashion brands and designer collections have specifically utilized the pornographic as a means of advocating for inclusive ideas of diverse race, uh, gender identities, and sexualities. When viewed alongside the dissemination and promotion of sex positive ideology, fourth wave feminism, queer politics, and racial equality um, in current culture, the contemporary fashion vanguard's transgressive pornographic representations demonstrate socio-political engagement akin to its antecedents in the historical artistic avant-garde. Taking its title from Kelly Dennis's book, Art Porn from 2009, uh, I'm going to analyze in this paper the connections between contemporary avant-garde fashion and pornography through an intersectional lens. So in this way, the vanguard narrative is, quote, born again um, through the fashion avant-garde's use of the pornographic, repeating historical iterations of uninhibited sexual expression and unruly imagery. Following Susan Sontag's essay, The Pornographic Imagination, I argue that avant-garde porn um, as a political and discursive practice remains a legitimate and radical artistic form. So the brands and designers whose work I will examine in this paper, Bernard Wilhelm, Eckhaus Lada, and Hood by Air, or HBA, as I will refer to them from now on, uh, will employ various, all employ various aspects of contemporary pornography in their critical practices at once advocating for intersectional representation in fashion and pushing the boundaries of design. I'm gonna start with Bernard Wilhelm. So Bernard Wilhelm's uh, pervasive agitation of conventional gender and sexuality is reflected in casting decisions made for models. Former gay porn actor Francois Sagat was a recurring model for the brand and a muse both on and off the runway. And so this is intriguing in the sense that in Greek mythology, as you all well know, the muse connotes uh, generally a female figure. Um, and so therefore, it is a label that culturally often applies more specifically to a woman rather than a man. Additionally, um, although Sagat is muscular, he is neither tall nor slim, so this simultaneously puts him at odds with the fashion industry's ideal for androgynous uh, body types, but in line with the gay porn ideal. Captured um, and featured in a calendar for the spring-summer 2008 campaign, Sagat is photographed in a multitude of provocative poses. In one image, he bends forward on all fours and exhibits his bare backside, uh, from which a bouquet of flowers emerges. Another close-up shot features Sagat wearing a mankini, so that is that garment actually also in the previous um, image, uh, with a small American flag hang from his erect penis. And the following image, uh, which is a personal favorite of mine, uh, shows him uh, fitting his penis into the tailpipe of a car. Um, yeah, no, I'm not going to say any more about that because it's self-explanatory fun. Okay, so references um, to the gay black male um, abound in the exhibition Bernard Wilhelm 3000, uh, when fashion shows the danger, then fashion is the danger, uh, which was an exhibition at the MoCA Pacific Design Center in Los Angeles in 2015. The exhibition, um, which featured the Bernard Wilhelm Autumn Winter 2014-2015 collection, included an enlarged wall text quoting an editor's note from the March 99 issue of 
uh, Black Inches, which is a now defunct American gay pornographic magazine, which featured black men exclusively. Large uh, blown up photographs, such as the one you see here um, of Wilhelm and two models, Jamal Barot and gay porn actor and escort Cutler X, are featured prominently in the exhibition. In one photograph, all three uh, wear leotards with Barot and Cutler X on all fours and Wilhelm mounting the ladder from behind. Various other photographs capture Barot and Cutler X standing while Wilhelm crouches and attempts to catch a glimpse of Cutler X's penis from underneath his jacket and Wilhelm seemingly about to spank Barot with two paddles in hand. And you can sort of see there's some text on one of the uh, paddles which says red hot modernismo. And I think these, these were also available for purchase in the uh, gift shop during the length of the show. <laughs> Unfortunately, I was unable to procure one. Um, in an interview magazine interview with Cutler X, Wilhelm acknowledges that Hollywood is quote, quite white and that Cutler X is quote, a role model for interracial gay sex end quote a perspective proudly intoned in the exhibition images. As a political statement, such imagery in connotation both rallies for cultural and sexual diversity and defies the demonization of the black male body. In a catalog for the 1994 exhibition Black Male at the Whitney Museum of American Art, curator Thelma Golden remarks on Robert Mamplethorpe's Black Male Bodies, stating that, quote, the reception of the photographs, the controversy they provoked, speaks volumes about the fear of black masculinity and more specifically of the lust and loathing of the big black dick, end quote. This black manhood is later, ar later articulated in an essay by the same catalog by Herman Gray, who calls attention to racist interpretations of black masculinity as, quote, incompetent, oversexed, and uncivil, ultimately a threat to middle-class notions of white womanhood, family, and the nation, end quote. If a black male is seen as counter to the white repressed bourgeois body, a gay black male body is yet more transgressive in its opposition to hegemonic white heterosexual masculinity. Thus, any representation of the gay black male simultaneously poses a challenge to the power relationship between the racial and sexual other and its oppressor and violates the dominant paradigm privileging whiteness, straightness, and manliness, three characteristics that define moral rectitude and the normal body. Moving on, so for the spring-summer 2017 collection for New York-based duo uh, Mike Eckhouse and Zoe Lada of Eckhouse Lada, uh, they cast non-professional -pro models who represented all manner of gender identities, sexual orientations, and cultural backgrounds in a campaign that the fashion press deemed NSFW or not safe for work. They collaborated with German-Korean photographer Heiji Shin on eight images that showed couples wearing and unwearing uh, the season's designs while engaged in non-simulated sexual activity. Shin's past work, um, a commission for a German sex education manual for teenagers entitled Sex and Lovers, a practical guide, included images of real couples having real sex or what philosopher Kane Todd calls quote, non-fictional pornography, end quote. While female breasts are covered and sexual organs pixelated, little is left to the imagination in terms of which sexual acts are being performed. Here we can see two males engaging in anal sex, while in this one, a female appears to be filleting a male. Yet another shows a female kissing a male while uh, manually stimulating his genitals. And here we see two potential gender uh, fluid or non-conforming individuals engaging in a similar activity. Arguably, such displays of sex and sexuality are not particularly shocking to the Eckhouse Lada uh, target market, which is generally a culturally diverse group, sexually liberated, uh, and educated um, group of millennial customers with jobs in the creative fields and progressive, if not leftist, um, political leanings. However, when these images are seen out of context and in the wider world uh, outside of liberal and progressive circles, they may solicit responses that underline the puritanical view of sex as private and non-reproductive sex as dirty and shameful. 
What the images do not show, what has been obscured, suggests that what lies underneath is salacious or vulgar, uh, rather than a natural biological act, and as such, Shin's photographs can be read as obscene acts of exhibitionism and voyeurism, and ultimately, pornography. Furthermore, their not safe for work label denotes that the racy photographs are not acceptable for viewing in a conventional workplace and indicates how the viewer may feel uneasy seeing such naked, nude, or partially clothed bodies in a non-private space, even if sexual organs are adequately censored. Whatever the images are labeled, they intend to promote sex and body positive messages while normalizing interracial relations and all sexualities rather than to just simply generate shock value, although there is that obvious connection between sex consumerism um, and selling sex in the name of fashion. Similar to her photographs um, for the German sex education manual, Shin's campaign images provide an educational function, although instead of conveying the how of sex, they show and teach acceptance in the who of sex, in the sense that everybody and anybody has sex. So lastly, I would like to turn your attention to the final spring-summer 2017 ready-to-wear collection of New York avant-garde streetwear brand HBA. I realize that might be a little bit contentious calling uh, streetwear brand avant-garde, but I'm just going to go for it. Um, and, and their collaboration with and sponsorship by the largest pornography video sharing website, Pornhub. Following in the footsteps of the spring-summer 2017 menswear runway presentation, which was actually uh, shown in Sun City, which is a gay sauna in Paris's Marais district, this collection includes Pornhub and Hustler-branded garments and an HBA profile, as you can see here, on the Pornhub website. For the runway show, the model's hair and faces were covered in liberal swipes of petroleum jelly, as if to suggest ejaculatory fluid or alternatively lubrication for sexual activity. The looks are likewise suggestive. One shirt, as you can see on the right, you can see some writing there, um, features the warning label text, not suitable for children, um, which runs up and down the arms, um, while another runway model um, wearing a black tank top branded with the Pornhub logo dragged along a black leather duffel bag, its semi-detached strap serving as a fetish-type leash um, hooked to the trouser waistband. Uh, also in the runway presentation, male and female models represented a diversity of genders, races, and sexualities, and there was no real definition of gender dress with females and males wearing skirts, halter tops, and other revealing items of clothing appearing equally as déshabillé. Rather than cast models to illuminate their tokenistic difference, HBA presented a plural vision of the fashioned sexual body as a way of standardizing heterogeneity. Glimpsing yet again at this uh, HBA account on Pornhub, it is clear that the creation of this profile was intended for branding purposes rather than Pornhub customers. As you can see, there are only 14 subscribers. I think this number actually went down compared to when I looked at it a few months ago. I could be wrong. And 16 friends um, with just over 20,000 views. So obviously the views and the friends and subscribers, you know, those numbers don't correlate. Um, and a playlist of 28 video clips, um, all ranging from 30 seconds to just over a minute and overlaid uh, with the hood by air word mark. Many of the videos are conventionally pornographic, likely gleaned from the website itself, and include scenes of gay group sex, interracial gay, lesbian, and straight sex and voyeurism. Other videos range from women fisting, tentacle hentai, and an animation of a woman being penetrated by Freddie Mercury, uh, to what appear to be humorous takes on various foot and mud fetishes, and I couldn't determine if some of these were actually um, put there by HBA or actually gleaned from the site, so it's a mix, potentially, of both. A couple of them were in German, too, which is surprising or not surprising, depending on how you look at it. Okay. Um, Yes, as well, there were some videos that are spoofs deliberately created by HBA as fashion don'ts that are filed under SFW or safe for work, which show clothing being burned, a pair of white jeans set alight in a fireplace, or the video entitled, as you can see here, May This Trend Reside in the Pits of Hell, which shows a bomber jacket roasting over an open pit and eventually catching fire. 
Humor aside, while the collection garments may seem subdued uh, compared to the titillating images that have inspired it, um, it, is, is, it is this holy alliance between fashion and sex, an outright acknowledgement of self and sexual pleasure for all that frames the brand's advocacy uh, for inclusivity. So to conclude, in this sense, uh, contemporary pornography can be seen as a broadly um, all-embracing uh, form in that it represents everyone and anyone having sex, no matter how conventional or taboo, in employing various strategies of the pornographic in their fashion practices, Bernard Wilhelm, Eckhaus Lada, and HBA, privilege diversity in its many forms and resist hegemonic structures of exclusion and inequality. I contend that there is a relationship between the sex positivity and transgression promoted in these designers' practices, um, whether it's in the garments themselves, the models wearing them, or how their fashions are promoted more generally. The exposure and repeti repetition of such imagery, whether in print or more widely on the internet, ensures that racial diversity, non-binary gender identities, sexualities, and other embodiments of difference become increasingly socially acceptable through their visibility. In other words, the recurrence of such images and associations append notions of normativity and work to regularize difference alongside sex and sexuality. As a result, the contemporary fashion avant-garde's intersectional representations of race, gender, and sexuality connect fashion, art, and pornography with the body, wherein the circulation of such pornographic imagery functions as an incisive and radical political act.